what, what the man is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Who amongst us didn't see this coming? Lawyers for Amber Geiger, the police officer in Dallas who shot and killed 26-year-old Botham John in his own apartment in 2018, have filed an appeal against her murder conviction. Geiger's attorneys are requesting she be acquitted completely of murdering John, for which she was sentenced to 10 years in prison last year, or be charged instead with the lesser crime of criminally negligent homicide. Geiger's attorneys argue in an appeal that the evidence originally submitted in the case was legally insufficient to prove beyond reasonable doubt that Geiger committed murder. They said she was confused about her location because the third and fourth floors where her and John's apartments were located look identical. Her mistaken belief negated the culpability for murder because although she intentionally and knowingly caused Botham John's death, she had the right to act in deadly force in self-defense since her belief that deadly force was immediately necessary under the circumstances the appeal reads. Although she had a taser and pepper spray on her along with her gun, Geiger's lawyers argued that officers are trained to not use those weapons when faced with deadly force. Deadly force that her ass created. What the hell is going on, fam? Let's recap what happened. Amber Geiger, a white woman, entered a young black man's home that was a floor above hers, found him sitting on his couch eating ice cream, and used her gun to shoot him in his heart. That's what happened. We don't give a damn about her making a mistake. We don't give a damn that she was disoriented. We don't care about the design of the complex. The lawyer is trying to blame the designer, is trying to blame the architects. All apartments, damn near all of these apartments are cookie cutter. The first floor looked like the fifth floor, the sixth floor. It's your job to go to, to the right damn apartment. If you're in a high rise, every floor looks the same. Unless you're in the penthouse suite. It's not his job. It's not my job to prove that I live in a house that I'm already in when you show up at my door with a gun. So what if my door is ajar? It's my door. You know it ain't your damn house. You don't just walk into somebody's house if a door is ajar, it looks like yours. Okay, it is your job, it is your duty to make sure you walk into the right apartment, the right home, to make sure that you're invited because I can guarantee you, I'm blessed. Walk in mine, man, I'm shooting first and asking questions later. Had the shoe been on the other foot, and Botham would have walked inside of her house and shot her, Botham would have gotten a life sentence. They probably would have gave him the death penalty. Appeals? That would be a joke. I can guarantee you that Mammy Tammy would not have came off that bench and hugged Botham had he shot Amber Geiger. Guaranteed. I can guarantee you that Amber Geiger's family, no member in her family, would have asked for permission from the judge 
to step down off the witness stand and give Botham a hug. This type of foolishness seems to be reserved for blacks. Where does these type of people come from? I have no idea. But wherever they came from, they need to go to hell back. She got to be punished because there's a couple things that's gonna, a couple things that's gonna happen. One, uh, she's gonna get out and reoffend. That's number one. But even bigger than her, it'll embolden the other cops. Every time one gets off, when they know that they should have been punished, it makes the others a little bit more brazen to trample over the civil liberties of the people that they are supposed to protect and serve. Well, we know how it go. This happens all too often. A cop ain't punished till they're punished because even if you get the conviction, it may not hold. Oh man, they got all kinds of tricks. They got the best lawyers, not necessarily the best meaning educated, competent or whatever. They just got the deck stacked. The unions are very powerful and they use that influence to circumvent the law. Yeah. I told you, well, I didn't have to tell you. I told you, but y'all already knew also that that whole little crying and shit in the trial, it was all an act. All of that hugging from the brother, the hugging from the judge. The judge hugged a murderer, fam. This is in case you were living under a rock over the past couple of years. Family. The judge came off the bench and hugged a convicted murderer. The brother hugging her was enough. The brother of the murdered victim asked the judge, can I give her a hug? This corny ass dude. Man, man, I can't even, man, what kind of woman? Did he got a girlfriend or a wife? Good God, what kind of woman would lay up with a man like that? That ain't even a man, that's a male. Talk about a lack of nuts. Good God. I knew it was a setup the whole time. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh man, this is going to aid big time in her appeals. Because everybody remember that. The judge was already regretful that she had to give us some time. If it wasn't for the jury, oh, she would have walked. She murdered a man and got 10 years in prison. That's already an injustice. Now she wants an appeal. She wants to be totally acquitted of any culpability. Talk about the audacity of carcassity. That uncivilized mutt need to remain in a cage to keep the rest of us safe. Appeal denied. No more talk. What the talking about?